You, you work incredibly hard, and I want to get a step deeper, and just so everybody can relate to you better, I want you to describe one of those times, because you mentioned that you know success is about the ebbs and flows, and, and you have your failures, and you have your successes, and it's, it's really about working through these. And so I want to get a little closer to you, and if you will, tell us a, a, of a time where in your photographic career where you were just kind of down, and how did you work your way through oh, that? Oh, that, that's easy, because I'm just going through that. <laughs> <laughs> this is right now. <laughs> this is right now. <laughs> I'm on SR Lounge. I'm trying to work my way back up, guys. <laughs> no, I mean, I think after, like, you know, the, the recession hit everybody hard. Yeah. And I think I felt like, oh, I've been through this before. I can do it, you know. But this time was harder than uh, the 9 11, mm. harder than the, the dot com bust because it lasted longer. Mm. And I saw friends leave the industry I'm like what's going on yeah I saw I saw a change in in publishing still seeing change in publishing mm. with the magazines I mean I'm seeing everything change and when that happens we want to try to revert back to the past and go back to what we know mm -hmm. but that's not the answer there's this great great book um, who moved my cheese it's just a great 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 book it's a book you can read over lunch, uh -huh. but it's a powerful, powerful book. And it talks about what's happening, not just in our industry, but in our world right now. Yeah. And I go back to that book all the time. It has helped me through my rough points in my career. Because you want to go back and try to revert to what you know, or go back to something else that worked. Mm -hmm. But that's in the past, and you've got to sometimes let that go and move on. Mm -hmm which can be hard to do, easy to say, but hard to do. And I had to learn how to do that. And when you let go of the past, then you grow. Mm -hmm. And that whole saying is like, you know, we have to go out on a limb to get the fruit. It's really, really true. You gotta go out on a limb sometimes and grab your fruit. Uh, and when you do that, the universe conspires to help you. Just like in you know, one of my other favorite books, uh, The Alchemist, mm -hmm. the universe conspires to help you succeed. But the universe also tests you, tests you to make sure you really want it really want it badly enough. Um, in 2001, uh, well actually the dot-com buzz going into 2001, that was a down period in New York uh, where I was w watching all these editors leave the magazines and go into dot-coms. Mm. And when that fell apart, people were like, oh my God, what's going on? Yeah. Into the world. Um, and doing that, that low in my career, I did my first book because I had a lot of time to devote to shooting things I loved. So I did Sepia Dreams, my mm -hmm. first book. And then things took off again because I had this whole machine working, which I had no idea what happened that way, but I had this machine working around creating this buzz about that first book. Mm. And I loved it because I'm, I wasn't shooting for a magazine or an advertising company. I was shooting stuff that I loved, that I felt passionate about. And it helped my career. Mm -hmm. But it also made me feel amazing because I'm putting things out there that I love. Then I did my second book, Lost and Found. Um, and then here we had the dot-com bust. I mean, then we had we had the recession hit in 2008, or depression, whatever you want to call it. And uh, <laughs> The depressing recession. <laughs> yeah, the depressing recession. Whatever you want to call it, that happened. And again, I had more time on my hands. So I've now worked on this book. That's pretty and, incredible. I mean, what I'm getting from this is that you're saying, and this is one of the most successful photographers in photography, and you're saying that you need to constantly evolve. Absolutely. And, absolutely. Because I always have a personal project. Yeah. I have several. But I love the personal projects because they really define you. I think, you know, well, I hope, you know, 100 years from now, when uh, I'm going for sure, I hope that my work can live on. And... As it lives on, it can hopefully inspire, you know, the next generation, generation after that, that just lives on and has a stronger purpose. Mm -hmm. That's what I would love for the images to do. Yeah. And yeah, what I love about that is, you, you know, I've heard so many people say, uh, 
oh yeah, you know, there's so many people coming into photography and oh, it's not like it used to be back with film and, and digital is ruining everything. It's not supposed there's, to be. There's never, you never mention anything about any outside, fo- when when things outside of you change, you change with it. And Absolutely. You, you evolve. That's how it has to be. You've heard it from the top, guys. So <laughs> there's no reason to blame other people. Just change and move forward. Absolutely. So now I'm going to break this into a simple thing. So if you were to sum all that up, into uh, I'll sum up all your success into one sentence. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, but if there is one thing that you could attribute to kind of being successful, what would that be? What would you say to kind of all the new photographers that are watching this that want to be where you are today and they want it so bad that they can taste it? I think there's one thing I could say that has helped me in my career um, into becoming successful, becoming successful. It would be learning how to relate to other people way beyond just having learning how to, to, to shoot the camera or, or do lighting because to be honest i can teach anybody those things mm-hmm. i can teach anybody how to use a camera how to light the hardest thing is learning how to relate to people mm-hmm. because whether you're shooting landscapes or still life or whatever you're shooting hopefully for a client a person and you want to keep doing that over and over and over again. So you got to learn how to how to deal, how to relate with people. Um, the art of what you do is different, but you got to learn how to run the business, how to be a business person, how to be uh, a visionary, how to be creative, and still manage relationships. Mm-hmm. I think there's one thing I'd say that would be helpful to anybody just starting out is learn how to manage relationships. Mm. Period. Because that will give you not just a job, it will give you a career. Yeah. That's a wonderful bit of advice. I mean, it goes so far beyond. I mean, it's really just business advice. I mean, this is like, you want to run any successful business, you need to manage Absolutely. relationships and be able to relate with people. relationships. And I, I see a lot of photographers, uh, their downside becomes, it, it comes very quickly after the point that they are no longer an artist, but an artiste. That's what I. That's what I say. <laughs> they're no longer artists; they're artists, yes. and that's the point where, like, essentially, they 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 stop relating to other people, and they they want, you know, the world is suddenly revolving around me. Yeah. People that come to me, oh, if you compare me to anybody, you're, I can't believe you just did that. Like you have offended me, sir, <laughs> and you must leave. But being able to not understand what a customer wants, what a client wants, what a friend wants, yeah is the first thing that's going to bring down your business faster Absolutely. than anything else. Absolutely. So that's a really great piece of advice, and I hope everybody understands and follows it. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. All right, so you do a ton of stuff, and you mentioned, we talked about it earlier, that you're working on your third book now. Yes. Um, and it's actually a very cool project, so I want you to talk about it. It's called Future Presidents. Absolutely. I've seen some of the images. They're actually really cool. The concept is awesome, too. Thank and you. uh I want you to tell everybody the Jimmy Carter story after you give a little explanation of what this is. So uh, what is Future Presidents? This is my third book. It's uh, it's called Future Presidents. And what's cool about this book, it's it's in line with, I guess, my first book. And it's in line with how I became a photographer. I believe that if you inspire somebody when they're very young, it lasts. Mm -hmm. And this book is about using photography to inspire children today, tomorrow, and in the future. To dream about becoming a the American president. It's this book through photography is reaching out and showing children, other children who look like them, who speak in their la- same language, have the same dreams, and teaching them to really aspire for greatness. Mm -hmm. I want this to be a tool that people can have 100 years from now to look back and say, oh, that book done in 2013 made me want to become president of the United States. Mm -hmm. That's what I'd love it to be. It's amazing when you think about that. I've seen some of the images, and I don't know if we can post them. You can tell Joe later on whether or not we can post them, but but, uh, they're very powerful images because when you look at each child and their, uh, when you look at a child, and I don't know, this maybe it comes from being a parent, but you look at them and, and, and they're all blank palettes. I mean, whatever their future is, it's the, the one important thing that I would think that each child should have is that confidence to dream 
And, uh, and, and that's what you had because your father was a minister, but exactly. you still had the confidence and the aspiration to do something else. And he gave that to you. He did. I think there's a lot of times our, our, our children can really get beat down into thinking there's only one way to live your life and there's only one right path. And, and we kind of, our creativity gets limited as we're coming out of the gate. That's true. That's true. And we can't think about the future. We think about the past. Mm-hmm. But the kids, I mean, they see things, they're a blank palette, they can dream. And I think it's, it's our, our responsibility to put things in front of them, to inspire them, to mm-hmm. make them feel like anything's possible. If we, if we put these parameters that, that stifle their growth, they won't grow. But if we let them freely think about anything and everything beyond what we can dream about, it's endless. It's, it's, yeah. it's the best thing in the world. Now, this project has a very unique story in that um, you got Jimmy Carter to write the, the four page for it, right? The, well, the, he, wrote, he wrote a, a, a blurb for the book. A blurb for the Okay. How? <laughs> like what? How? Matthew, I don't understand. <laughs> well, go back to the whole thing of, you know, the universe conspiring to help you. Yeah. I at first wanted to, to get the president to write a uh, the forward for my book, mm-hmm. which is, you know, it's a goal. A uh, pretty big it's, feat. It's a big, it's a big <laughs> goal, big feat. Um, so I wrote letters to the White House, uh, to the First Lady, and of course got no response. Yeah. So I'm on a plane going to Creative Live uh, to speak and also to do another shoot for my book in Seattle. Mm-hmm. So on the plane, um, looking at what I've shot so far for the book, and I'm going through and I'm uh, somewhat going through my edit and seeing if the images are powerful enough. And there's an a empty seat beside me. And the guy's on the, on the window side. I'm on the aisle. So I put my, my, my iPad down. And he took so, looks over and he says, are you a photographer? I'm like, yes. So I talk about photography. And he's on his way on vacation. So he wants some tips about photography. Yeah. He's going to an Alaska. Wait, this is... Jimmy Carter. <laughs> no, no, no. This is okay. This is this is the guy who introduced me to Jimmy Carter. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so um, we're talking, talking about photography, and he's telling me, you know, he's going to Alaska. He's on vacation, and he's a high school principal. Mm-hmm. So he's asking me for like tips on photography. I'm giving him tips on photography, and then I show him my book because I want his take on it being a principal. Mm-hmm. So he says, he says, oh wow, this is a great project. I really like this project, and then I say. Yes, I was trying to get the president to write the introduction for the book. You know, you know, uh, I had to just put it out there because you never yeah. know. And he says, he says that's that's lofty. It's a lofty goal. He says, but actually, a sitting a sitting president can't do anything. He says, but an ex president can. What? So then you know okay. we keep talking, and after maybe an hour, he says, I think this book is so incredible that people need to see this book. Yeah. He's like, I have a friend who I like to see this book. I'm like, okay. Um, but at the time I'm like, you know, he doesn't say who his friend is. He just says, I have a friend who I'd like to show this book to. Um, and I'm very hesitant about showing the book to anybody mm-hmm. uh, outside of my circle. Um, but then we keep talking and he says, my friend's Jimmy Carter. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, uh, the Jimmy Carter, like, <laughs> so President Jimmy Carter, um, and he's he's telling me that this is a powerful book. I should write a letter to him. I'm like, okay. He's like, if you write the letter to him, send a package, send it to me, and I'll get it to him. So then I, I get off the plane in L.A. and the, the first thing on my mind is just getting back and preparing this letter to go to the Honorable Jimmy Carter. Mm-hmm. So I, I put this package together. I formed this letter to him, and in the letter, I ask him to write a letter to the future generations of American presidents, mm-hmm. and send it off, and, uh, and pray, <laughs> and pray, and pray, and you know, you never know what you're gonna get back. Yeah. So, a month later, I come home, uh, in my mailbox. And there's a letter from the office of Jimmy Carter. 
uh, I'm nervous just opening it. Mm-hmm. I open the letter up, and then I'm just like standing there, and my fiance is like, "Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay?" I'm just like I'm stunned because I'm holding a handwritten letter from President Jimmy Carter. Yeah. To the future presence of the United States. That's incredible. It's handwritten. Yeah. And I was I was speechless. Yeah. I was speechless. And uh, that's that's an incredible story. And this came from. Okay, I, I gotta ask this question. I'm sorry. Were you sitting in coach, business class, or first class? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I was I was sitting in in uh, in the coach. Okay, that's perfect. Because I was sitting in coach. These are the people that are sitting next to you, right? I don't I don't want anyone to be like, well. He's sitting in first class. I don't have those kind of people sitting next to me. <laughs> but you got out and just talk to people. I mean, these, this is like how often do we get on planes or how often do we go outside and we just kind of like stay in our own. We put up these barriers, these walls, right, where absolutely. whether it's an iPad or whether it's a book or whatever it is, you have that kind of sign on the forehead, leave, leave me, me alone. alone, don't want to talk. And But by that, you never know. I find it you incredible that just by talking to someone, you it led to getting a letter from Jimmy Carter for your new book. Yes. So and then and then that was I guess maybe probably five months ago now, mm-hmm. uh, six months ago now. A month ago, we were invited to dinner with Jimmy Carter. Are you serious? So, That's crazy. Uh, my fiance and I go and we actually meet him for the first time. Yeah. And go to this dinner honoring him, and that was very cool. Wow. That's incredible. Okay, so now this book you're still working on, but absolutely. When can we expect or get this book, or what do you have going on right now? That we By need the know fall. About? So I have. We are now launching a Kickstarter because okay. I, I've used all my own funds to mm-hmm. to uh, go to the first thirty two states in America mm-hmm. and photograph kids in different states, but we've now run out of money. So <laughs> I've started a Kickstarter campaign, which will launch uh, this week. Mm-hmm. Um, telling people about the project for the first time because I've, I've had it hidden all this time. Yeah. Well, my my good friends and family know about the project, and I've been uh, tweeting online by saying the future project mm-hmm. and talking about oh we're now in Virginia oh we're now in Hawaii oh we're now here just giving people little bits and pieces that we're shooting something but not putting it out there yet. Mm-hmm. Now we're for the first time it's very scary to do that. We're now putting it out there. And telling people what we're doing through Kickstarter, mm-hmm. and hopefully uh, we can involve America in helping complete the book and put it out there. Yeah, well, I love the concept, and we're for sure going to let everybody know multiple times. <laughs> so, well, we'll have to expect that and, and check it out on Kickstarter and everything. And I'm really excited for the book. I think it's an Thank amazing you. concept and project, and I love. I don't know. I love the confidence that it, this could instill on children, just keeping their dreams Absolutely. alive. Absolutely. I, I think it's, it's so wonderful. It's, it's great getting out because I'm meeting strangers. Mm-hmm. I'm going across America, um, taking pictures. I'm approaching strangers and telling them what I'm doing. And these parents have to believe in this concept, this idea, so so strongly to let a stranger come to their life, photograph their child, and put them in this book. Mm. And we haven't. This is a project where we haven't we haven't gotten a no. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not true. We've we've had we've gotten two no's, but both times it was because uh, of other situations. One time was the the mother without the husband, and she felt her husband needed to be, be part of it first mm-hmm. before she said yes. The other case. Um, it was a family, and they said we have things going on. We don't want to be part of the book. We think it's a great book project, mm-hmm. uh, but that's it. Yeah, that's it. So I go out, I find strangers that fit a category that looks like America. Mm-hmm. I want this book to encompass every nationality, every every group that makes up this wonderful country. So I look for people that represent, you know, a segment of the population mm-hmm. and photograph them and then ask that child, what would you do if you were president of the United States? Mm-hmm. Photograph them, then have them write in their own handwriting what they would do. And the answers are sometimes funny, sometimes thought provoking, mm-hmm. sometimes brilliant. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you're 
you're turning on the light bulb for the first time and making them think, wow, I can be the president of the United States one day. Yeah, that's something that they never even thought of. And, I mean, asking that question, they've probably heard that question in school before, but it's in a classroom situation. Mm -hmm. But this is the attention focused on them. Yeah. And then they're photographed in this in this high end way, where it's like they are the star. Mm -hmm. That's very powerful. Yeah, for sure. I, I think it's an amazing project. And tell me a little about like uh, you know a lot of very successful photographers like yourself always keep these side projects going, and I think it's a Absolutely. crucial thing. And it so, is. what would you say to how do you find these projects that you're going to work on, and how do you devote the time to be able to put towards them? I think you think you love you you find the time. I, I always have ideas. Uh, I've got tons of ideas for, for book projects. I love the book projects. Mm -hmm. um, and as a matter of fact, this book project I had back in 2008. Um, you had the idea of doing it. Oh, in 2008. Okay. And started working on it back then, but that's right when the economy fell apart and I just couldn't afford to do it. Mm -hmm. And there was no Kickstarter at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and now through the Kickstarter, I can finish the book project. Um, as work got better, I went out and did more pictures on my own, did more mm -hmm. traveling on my own, and spent all of, of last year in my free time just working on the book project. Mm -hmm. uh, and we got the first 32 states that way. Uh, but now, to finish the book and put it out there the way I want to put it out there, we need help from America. That's awesome. Well, I, I love the fact that regardless of how busy you are, you still are pushing forward with these side Absolutely, projects. Absolutely, because I mean, I mean, at, to be honest to me, with, with, with the work that I do, I love the work, mm -hmm. but what like feeds my soul is the personal projects. Mm -hmm. You know, I do a job, I shoot a celebrity or shoot an ad campaign or shoot a model, it comes out in a magazine, it's out for a month or three months or six months, and then it's gone forever. Mm -hmm. It doesn't change about its life, it sells a product. The books are different. Mm -hmm. The books are me using photography as a tool to say how I feel about the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's what I love. Yeah. I love that. I think that's an incredible product. So as I already have said many times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it reminds me of uh, Jeremy Cowart, who we had in here. He had another uh, photograph project you've heard Absolutely. of, Help Portrait. But another love great Jeremy. concept. Great guy. Great, great, great and, guy. And uh, yeah, really nice guy too. He's an awesome guy. And, and Help Portrait, you hear about it and you're like, that seems kind of silly, but just like you said, like these kids never have entertained that. I mean, e even if it were asked or told to them one day, it's never been entertained. Uh, and, and to put that much focus on them and to just that much like production value that goes into it, this big photographer and his, and his production crew is taking a photo of them, it they the opens up that dream. Absolutely. Just like how Help Portrait kind of goes and reminds people that other people think they are, you know, wonderful and, they, and it gives them confidence and and it can change lives just having someone else focus a little bit of time on you so absolutely i absolutely. love it and kudos to you for that i have, I have ideas even if like you know i'm not sure if this can happen or not but i have this idea about making each child the star in wherever state they're from mm -hmm. and having a book signing based around that child that so instead so of cool. me signing books that child mm -hmm. is signing books that would be so awesome I mean, how cool would that be to have a child in every state have their own book signing where they're signing, oh yes, I'm gonna be the president one day. I mean, that's powerful stuff. Hey, you got Jimmy Carter to write the forward. <laughs> well, I gotta find a company who wants to sponsor so, that part also. So we'll, we'll, we'll I have next. faith in you, you can do that. <laughs>